<laughs> Hi everybody! <laughs> Cooking stream number three. Getting underway. Double checking something real quick. Stay hydrated. Sweet. This is a threat. Hydrating myself real quick. Let's make sure the sound alerts work. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. I'm going to get my apron on. Whew. Hot one out there, man. Just had to run in my car. Thank God it's like 104, something like that. Wild. A little bit of a heat wave going on in Texas right now. Hotter than usual. Highs in like 103, 104. It's a scorcher, man. Hey! Don't Little boy. Touch Who touched my spaghetti? spaghetti? Dope 24, loved 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 24, Ready to watch Dope Boy make some biscuits? That's the first thing we're starting off on. Cooking stream hype. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Huge. Oh, very exciting. Um, yeah, we got a couple pointless point over there. <laughs> Commands over there in that general direction. Uh, recipes. If you want to check out the recipes, cooking to see what I'm cooking, or you can just ask. And chef's kiss. If you want to blow me a kiss, you know, could be cool. But we're going to start with uh, biscuits right now. So all these recipes you can, oh shit, scroll this up. All these recipes you can find on the uh, uh, the command exclamation point recipes. I'll be talking through my biscuit process. I made biscuits pretty much for a living for about a year and a half, so I've got some opinions about temperatures. Okay, cool. So we have our flour here. We just took it out of the freezer. It's been in the freezer for about two hours. And we have a cup of butter here that's been kind of small diced. Mm. Kind of small diced, hard to tell. Oh, let me pull this up just so I'll make sure it's working for later. Whenever I'm frying the chicken. <laughs> Got a little, okay, there we go, that's a little better. <laughs> there we go, small dice. That's going to be the, the fryer cam whenever we're frying up the chicken. <laughs> Hashtag fry cam. All right. Get some gloves out. And we're going to slowly start kind of working the butter into this flour I have. These, okay. These are the agents. We got baking soda, baking powder. We got salt. A little bit of black pepper. I'm gonna add it all into the flour in one go. How much a two to one of baking powder to soda. And then about a tablespoon of salt and about a teaspoon of black pepper. So this flour is still nice and cold coming out of the uh, freezer. So I'm just gonna start cutting my little butter nuggets into the flour. This way we will work the butter into the uh, into the flour, and you kind of want to get all the butter cubes apart and just get them um, spread out as much as possible because you want the butter pieces at the end to be about pea sized or a little bit smaller, depending on you know your preference. But I usually like to do a little bit like a like a large pea, or actually yeah, a little regular sized pea, but. You're just kind of uh, moving your fingers, slowly breaking up, kind of cutting and dividing with your nails, the little butter squares into the flour here. Kind of slowly. This does this part does take a minute, but you know if you get it, you know this is where the love comes in the biscuits. You know the the kind of meticulous, you know butter and uh, butter and flour merging. 
And the smaller you get the butter, the more the bread generally will expand and rise. So that's how you see biscuits, you know, with a, with a very tall, as you kind of slowly work the butter into it and it helps it leaven. How I've been today? Oh, I've been great. You know, just getting ready for the cooking stream. So having a lot of fun. Got to test that fried chicken about like an hour ago. So <laughs> but it took like a 30 minute nap because that chicken, oof, it's good. Um, but then I woke up, drank some Red Bull and now I'm here. Ready for this, uh, ready for this fun night. Should be a little bit longer stream too. Uh, cause generally the cooking streams, they're like, you know, a little bit less than three hours, but this one should be like, you know, get to three and a half hours. So I'm doing a lot of stuff today. <laughs> but yeah, so the pieces are getting smaller and smaller. All this, uh, butter working into the flour here. And we're just kind of making sure that they, you know, get mixed together nicely. Not really much else to say at this point, but I'll kind of just, while I'm doing this, I'll talk about, uh, kind of what else we're cooking tonight. You know? Uh, exclamation point cooking in chat to see you know exactly what I'm cooking but after this I'm gonna start working the uh, mac and cheese so mac and cheese with a bacon and rye bread crumb um, topping with a caramelized onion bechamel there it is and uh, mac and cheese so that will be baked with a uh, the little nice little bacon crumble on top with a caramelized onion bechamel Oof. tasted it oh, I made it earlier and it's oh, so good Deviled eggs, you know, your classic deviled eggs uh, that you would find at any picnic or, you know, family gathering. Nothing fancy. Well, I mean, yeah, just a little bit different. Yo, cooking stream, <laughs> let's go. How you doing, Connor? Welcome in. Just uh, kneading this flour into this butter right now, so we're starting off with biscuits. And then uh, cowboy caviar I'll also be making a little bit later. Um, which is really fun if you don't know what that is. It's kind of like a cold bean salad, but also used as dips. It's a pretty interesting history about it too, because it's from Texas, um, or at least the uh, the origins of Texas caviar, aka cowboy caviar, are from Texas. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But there's some pretty interesting uh, history, including the Driscoll Hotel in Austin. So that'll be fun. And then after that, fried chicken. Um, got my fryer, got my hashtag fry cam going down, so you'll be able to see that chicken frying while I'm deep frying it. But a lot of a lot of stuff to take care of up until then. Mac and cheese, of course we got these biscuits. All right, we're about there. So I'm just slowly working the butter in with my hands, kind of cutting it, like I said earlier. And uh, almost got to appropriate size, but we're gonna make a little well once it's done and add the buttermilk. And then, that's when it gets interesting. We put it on the table and do some folding. Oof, fun stuff. Brings me back to my biscuit maker days. Well, how's everybody? Uh, how's everybody doing? How's everybody Sunday? Hope everybody's staying cool out there. If you're uh, if you're in the Texas area, bit of a heat wave's kind of brutal right now. I just walked down my car to get something, <laughs> and uh, oof, man, it's still hot out there. All right, so. Almost there. I got the buttermilk all weighed out. And the reason why you get these butters, uh, the butter pieces small and kind of, you know, you don't want to exactly wet sand, something a little bit, a little bit more coarse than that, or at least for the way that I make my biscuits. But that's just to help give the, uh, the bread a nice leavening power. All those little butter pockets will melt and rise and create a nice, uh, Nice fluffy and puffy biscuit. Woo. And I got all my baking powder and baking soda in here as well with uh, salt and a little bit of black pepper. I personally do like a little bit of black pepper on my biscuits. I know it's a, uh, not a lot of Southerners do it. Uh, it's, I mean, I, either, you know, I like pepper in the biscuit or in on the butter with honey, but I think, I think pepper really makes a, like a nice pepper honey makes a really great biscuit topper. Like black pepper, like like black pepper honey butter on biscuits. That's like kind of that's that that does it for me. That's that's all I need. These biscuits are going to be laminated. Uh, they're going to be folded three times. Then probably cut them into squares. Uh, I have a pastry cutter, but I'd rather just use my knife. I like, I don't know. I think biscuits that are square look so much more cooler than ones that are round. 
which is a personal preference. I like the corners. I think the corners just have like a nice crunch. You don't have the corners on a biscuit. It's a little more round, but I like those crispy corners. All right, so I'm gonna make a little well here. Get some new gloves. And then we're gonna start mixing the buttermilk in. I'm gonna clear off my workstation because we're going to be, oh, wow. We're going to be rolling some biscuits here pretty soon. A little bane out here, butter pat. I'll leave my knife there, we'll need it a little bit. Okay. Just grabbing a little bit of flour here. For my workstation, make sure I have enough. So nothing sticks to the table there. It'll be my bench, bench flour, whatever you want to call it. A nice nimble rolling pin here. Alright, throw some gloves on. Pour this buttermilk well begin to make the dough, then we'll put it out on the table, give it a couple folds, cut it, start doing something else, and then we'll finish it off with a little egg wash. But until then. Let's mix. All right, so I'm pouring the water, I'm pouring the, sorry, not water, the buttermilk right in kind of the middle of this, uh, the well that I've made in the, in the center of the bowl here. This is two cups of buttermilk to the recipe that you can find on the, uh, using the, uh, and I'm doing a little bit less than two cups. I'm saving a little bit of this for the uh, buttermilk dredge. And then from the edges, I'm just going to kind of slowly work the buttermilk into the flour. And the reason why you kind of freeze the flour here is uh, because whenever you're mixing, you want the dough to stay pretty much as cold as possible before you, uh, you know, before you start to fold it and mix it. The dough's coming together here, just kind of working it through with my hands. And you kind of want to get it just workable to where it's a nice dough. And then on the table, you'll give it a nice little flouring. And this is definitely the messy part, but you know, if you're making biscuits, you're gonna make a mess. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how clean you do it. Trust me, I, I was a biscuit maker for a year and a half. You're always gonna make a mess. Do not worry about it. In my opinion, if you're not making a mess in kitchens, you're not really cooking. And then I'm gonna roll this nice dough out here. I'm gonna get a little florage down, a little flour. Got the dough that is kind of semi-cohesive here, just enough to get onto the table. I'm not going to scrape the bowl too much because at this point the kind of dough that's on the side is a little bit, you know, won't really incorporate back in the dough very well. So just kind of have a semi-dirty bowl there for a second. And then we're going to start mixing the dough together and then we're going to start folding. Loki hate making messes though. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't like making messes either, but I like I like cooking, so kind of have to. All right, so biscuit dough is down. Got my rolling pin. Uh, I think I have a bench scraper too. Nice. A nice bench scraper. So we're just kind of kind of get this dough on the table like this. I'll move it up a little more so you guys can see it. So we got the dough down, and then I'm just kind of just squaring it off a little bit, getting it into a nice square shape, because I will cut them into squares eventually, so we're just going to have a nice fold here. It's working well down with the dough, so make a little roll out here. And you want to make it around 9 by 16. I probably should have buttered, should have floured this. Darn, I forgot to flour my... Uh, Got to flour my rolling pin here. All right, much better. All right, so you want about nine by sixteen, around like that. And then you pretty much you take from one side. And you're just going to fold it right over the other like that. And then you mix it the other way like this. Move it out of the way. A little bit more flour down. And then once more with the rolling pin. 
roll it out. This one's not as square, but a little bit wider. You can always just kind of shape it how you need it, you know. No matter what kind of shape you roll it into, you just want to make sure it's consistent when you fold it, or the edges cinch up at least a little bit there. So, I'm going to turn around. We're going to do it one or two more times here. I can already feel the dough starting to, um, the gluten starting to activate, so it's giving a little pushback because we're slowly working the butter into the dough. So we're going to do another roll. Yeah, I've not used this rolling pin in a long time, so this is very, uh, there, I'll probably just, that's actually not even a rolling pin. That's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of wood that I found, so we'll just kind of push it with our hands here. I thought it was a rolling pin. All right, now we're going to have one more fold. One more fold, and then we'll do a nice cut. All right, there we go, last one. And then we're going to move some of this flour out. Because we don't want too much flour because we're gonna be moving on to our baking tray. So we don't want too much flour on the underside of the uh, of the biscuit whenever you're plating it. You don't want too much, but you do, don't wanna have them stick. So we're gonna kind of press this guy out one more time, give it some cuts. And we'll chill it for a little bit. Then it's going into the oven and then into our bellies. Ah, right up here. All right. And we're just going to cut in about an eh, inch and a half squares. Something like that. Maybe we'll do one more. Let's see here. We can go down. There, and then we'll kind of square this guy off. Now I'll kind of show you guys how I have these positioned. Do another cut there. So it's about one and a one and a half inch squares, just around about there. You know, they don't have to be perfect, but does help if they are, uh, you know, around the same size will be consistent in baking. So, got nice biscuits down there. We've got some leftover biscuit dough. I will probably make some, uh, make something else with that. We'll probably freeze it. Biscuit dough also freezes very, fairly well for at least, um, I don't know, like less than a week or then it'll start to oxidize, but chilling baked goods does some <laughs> does something magical, true. So we got our Biscuits up here, nice squares, about an inch and a half. And then we're gonna let them chill in the fridge for yeah, about 20 minutes, and then egg wash them, and then we'll throw them in the oven. Okay. Sweet, well, I'm gonna clean this mess a little bit, then. We'll get started on our next project. Hey, thanks, Pluto. <laughs> Meet my mic a little bit, because I'm doing a little... Every time I'm in the street, I hear Lee 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 Lee. Ben Lee Lee Lee. Lee 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 Lee. Lee 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 Lee. Lee 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 Lee. All right. Get started on our next little project here, but let those biscuits chill. Get my bane back. My towels. Cool. 
wash my knife off. So I'm just preheating my oven to about 375. Have that ready whenever the biscuits are good to go. All right. All right, project number two. Biscuits are in. I'm gonna set a little timer on that, 20 minutes. So we don't forget. And I'm pretty sure I have a pastry brush. I thought I checked that. I do. Do you have a pastry brush? Pastry brush pog. All right, now we're gonna make some mac and cheese. And we'll get this in the oven, baking while the biscuits are uh, chilling. So this is with the uh, caramelized, uh, caramelized onion bechamel, one of the recipes you can find in the uh, exclamation point recipes. Just gonna mix. We're gonna bake it in a little uh, casserole tin here. Nice little cheap disposable casserole tin. Love these. We're making a little uh, baked mac and cheese. So I'll talk a little bit about the caramelized onion bechamel. It's a pretty classic uh, French mother sauce. Um, kind of think like gravy, as a, a you know, as you would see in you know, in kind of the more southern sphere. But it's got you know black pepper, generally thyme, some onion into it. Um, usually it's just kind of cooked onion, but I decided to caramelize it because caramelized onion just you know just makes things better in my opinion. So I'm going to grab a little bowl here and mix our. Uh, a little crumble for the breadcrumbs. We have this really excellent cup of breadcrumbs from the other side deli <laughs> that they let me uh, take home from some of the heels that it was uh, on the bread that we use. Speaking of the other side deli, it's the place that I'm working at right now, rocking the t-shirt. Love to see it. Anyways, well, I plug the uh, plug the restaurant real quick. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. This mac and cheese will have a distinctly uh, rye flavor, which I love, especially rye and caramelized onions. It's a great flavor combination. So I'm mixing the breadcrumbs in with uh, a little bit of rendered and chopped bacon. Think kind of bacon bit style, just uh, fully cooked and mixed. And there was bacon fat in the bechamel, so you kind of make a roux with the bechamel. And I did a half roasted garlic oil and a half bacon fat just to really kind of enforce, you know, the bacon flavor. I mean, everybody, who doesn't love bacon? So the reason I'm kind of just mixing this bacon so much in these breadcrumbs is you want the fat from the bacon rendered to like, you kind of want to coat that section because that'll get a really nice and crispy when it bakes off. The bacon and the, and you don't want it super, you don't want it super wet, but you do want a little bit of, you know, texture. It's not exactly moist, wet sand, but with a little bit of oil that's leaking off from the bacon, it's gonna really stick on to the top of the dish, and that'll, you know, you'll get a really nice, solid, crispy, uh, crispy topping. So that's mixed together, we'll, you know, we'll top with that eventually. But that's just the uh, breadcrumbs and bacon. So we're gonna grab about two cups of some cooked elbow noodles. I 
down a bowl because of the biscuits. So you're gonna take about two cups. Whoop. One. I think that should fill our nice little casserole tin here. We got one, two. And this is a really great way to do. Um, uh, you know, I got the cold bechamel here with this, so you know you're not gonna break the bechamel sauce. Uh, you know, once everything gets super warm in the middle, you know, instead of cooking it from hot with the bechamel, there's a tendency of overcooking and it'll break. But when you're starting from cold like this, uh, with a cold bechamel, it kind of um, you know you don't really have to worry about that too much. So I got about a cup of the cold bechamel. Uh, we're gonna mix it into the noodles here, and the uh, I made the bechamel pretty spicy because I knew this was gonna be the main binder for the mac and cheese. Also gonna add a little bit of extra Colby and Cheddar Jack cheese, but you're just kind of well incorpororating the noodles. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. Oh sheesh, thank you for the 420 bits. Let's go. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> hey, 420 bits, you love to see. Hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of here. I love that name. Thank you for following. All right, so we got the bechamel coated on the noodles. Very, very cheesy, very cold. <laughs> so pouring that into the casserole tin. And just as I suspected, we have an excellent amount of mac and cheese. Okay. We're gonna, gonna pack it in, but not too tight, into the uh, casserole tin. Change gloves here. Don't need this. Don't need this. Ah, here it is. Didn't know where I put my cheese. We're gonna get a little coating of cheese just on top here. It's already pretty cheesy all the way throughout with the bechamel. But we just want a little light topping of cheese here. And the cheese on top just helps the uh, the breadcrumb stay in place, especially with all the all the oil and fat that's in the uh, the breadcrumbs. So we're just gonna kind of start, yeah, on top, spread it around a little bit. We got plenty of breadcrumbs, so I'm just gonna go wild. I do like a nice crispy. Love me a nice crispy mac and cheese. So we got it pretty much covered in bacon and uh, breadcrumb with a lot of bacon fat. And you don't want to have too much breadcrumbs on there. Kind of dump off some of the top because, you know, if you have too big of a coat, then you know you only get you only get pockets that uh, end up rendering. Yeah, and it's okay if a little cheese pokes through. I think it's going to be kind of coming through the uh, breadcrumbs there, which is kind of, kind of why I like to mix it around. It gets the you know get some crispy cheese on top too. It's very uh, very nice. We got the. Oven at 375 that's already preheated. Uh, we're just gonna wait on the biscuits for now. We're gonna toss this guy in here and start on something else. Yeah, mac and cheese is going in the oven. I threw it in the bottom, uh, on the bottom rack, uh, uncovered. So that's kind of, you want to get the nice crispy bits on top. So yeah, biscuits are in. I mean, mac and cheese are in. Biscuits are uh, still in the refrigerator for a little bit. some bacon bits not going on. I'm a, I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> I've been trying not to eat today so I can eat a lot on stream but I'm getting hungry. All right so how much longer we got on the biscuits? 10 minutes cool. We're going to start measing out our uh, Texas caviar aka cowboy caviar. Different names but
All right, so like I was saying before, Texas caviar is kind of something that was um, kind of birthed in Texas. If you look into it a little bit, it was originally made by, oh, I forgot her name already, Mary something. Uh, oh, Helen, Helen Coltred. Uh, and she first she first made it as an appetizer at the, at the Houston Country Club. And then she made it later at the Driscoll Hotel, which is how the coin was, how the term was coined, Texas caviar. Driscoll Hotel, in case you don't know, is a very famous hotel in Austin. It's been around since the you know, late 1800s. So these are just some um, fresh black eyed peas. So the base of Texas caviar is generally black eyed peas or black beans. Always fresh. I mean, I mean, you can eat canned beans in Texas caviar, I guess, if you want, but the fresh bean just tastes so much better. So cook them in a little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic, touch of salt, some black peppercorns, a little bit of celery, a little bit of Italian seasoning. You get a really nice, like, uh, kind of a floral aroma off the beans from it. It's kind of cool. But anyways, this will be kind of like the, I think, the fruit of a pico de gallo. So generally, Texas, Texas caviar or whatever, it's a spread on chips. Although sometimes it serves as bean salad. Kind of depends on, you know, who you're making it for. But I'm going to do kind of like a, a, bean, a bean salad dip. So, so yeah. I'm going to bowl out, start mixing. Two truths, one lie poll. Oh, geez. I don't think I have time for that. I'll, I'll have to think about it. That takes some time to set up. I don't. I'll think of something. But I'll have to pull up my, uh, my stuff for that. We do it later. Yeah, I'll think about it and then I'll, uh, I'll redeem it later. All right, so we got some really nice um, tomatoes here. Tomatoes from Marfa, Texas. That's what I love about HEB is you can find really nice tomatoes at your local uh, grocery store. Party tomatoes. They're really tasty. I had some earlier. Um, but I'm going to do maybe about three kind of smallish potato uh, tomatoes. And then we're going to chop up some scallions as well. We got some scallion whites. I'm going to do about three scallion whites there. That's some grilled corn that's been uh, grilled with a little bit of paprika and cumin. So it's got you know, a little bit of a I'm gonna cook it in some butter as well. So just some, you know, cooked, almost grilled charred corn. It'd be really delicious. And then a little bit of raw pepper and some scallion greens. Got a nice little vinaigrette that I'll talk about here. But we'll start with the beans. I'm gonna do about one cup of beans. Yeah, a little over a cup of beans. Stop eating the beans. Okay. So we're gonna cover our tomatoes next. I'm gonna get these guys maybe like a little, um, not so much a dice, but you know, so beautiful. I want to keep them salt. I want to keep these tomatoes pretty whole. I don't want them to get chopped up too much because they're really good. Get a little salt in this tomato. Hmm. Okay. okay. So they're very sweet. I'm just gonna dice them up. Kind of large. I like a nice, like a nice crispy, nice fresh, crisp potato. I mean tomato. You say tomato, I say potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Whew. All right. So I guess you could say I'm uh, like sixteenthing these, but they're really just kind of cut down into four times with a little chop halfway through. So my uh, Texas caviar will be a little bit chunky than most you would probably see. Generally served like kind of as a salsa or a condiment, so. But I'm gonna eat it with, with a tortilla chip, so. A little, little woody stem there. Shall remove. All right, and we're gonna toss the uh, tomatoes in the salad there. Let's see here. For a cup. I'd say that's probably enough tomato, so I'm gonna put this tomato back. Do 
Biscuits. I'm going to guess they have four minutes and 30 seconds left. <laughs> Close. 4.44. So now we got three scallion whites here. We're going to chop up kind of fine length-wise. This would be a nice kind of uh, fresh onion. Yeah. This uh, often, like, the best way you can describe this is like a really chunky bean salsa because it's got all the ingredients like a pico de gallo or a salsa would, but just the bean is the base. So you can kind of picture the, you know, picture the flavor combinations just from there. So scallions in, some nubs here, some nice fresh red bell pepper because I don't want it too spicy. I just want that nice kind of raw pepper flavor. Might add a little jalapeno, just, uh, depending on how spicy these peppers are. So right now I'm just I'm gonna kind of just julienne them down, and then I'll eventually dice them up. But for now, just a chopping, just a chopping. Let's see here for about a cup. This is what we're looking, what we're working with so far. We got tomatoes, we got beans, we got some scallions. Um, so this was about a half a pepper. Yeah, this should be good. Save this for something else. And then we're just kind of going to chop down our julienne. And then probably run through it one more time or two. I want to get these guys nice and small. They'll taste a couple, see how spicy they are and put in, but... Love me the taste of raw bell pepper. Raw bell pepper to me is like... It tastes so healthy. Alright, so we got about a tablespoon and a half of red bell peppers in there. And they do have quite a bit of spice. So I will not be adding that um, the aforementioned jalapeno. Because I will be adding a little uh, a little chili chili garlic sauce to kind of round it out. Give them more of kind of a depth depth feel. And give it the bonk. Then we got our uh, paprika and cumin roasted corn here. Do about, let's say... Tablespoon, about two tablespoons of roasted corn. Mm, this corn is good though. Mm. I could smell the bacon coming through on the um, <laughs> on my oven. Got the uh, mac and cheese in there. All right, Get these scallion greens for a little garnish. Got most of the veg in there already, so now we're going to add a little chopped cilantro as a nice herb and squeeze a lime just because I think it needs it. Uh, but also, I'll be adding the vinaigrette that I made. So, roasted garlic oil vinaigrette you can find in the uh, in the exclamation point recipes if you're looking to figure out what it is. But it's mostly apple cider vinegar, a little bit of lemon juice, and we got some cilantro here that we're going to chop up. Yeah. Nice little, nice little pinch of cilantro there. All right, lovely. Why is your outlet crooked? No clue. Feel free to ask the apartment company if you want. I noticed it, but I didn't want to say anything, yeah. Cilantro is in. I'm gonna get a little spoon here. Mix it up. We got our monkey flip. Give their number right now. <laughs> Alright, so we got the bean salad going now. So we got the tomatoes, the uh, cilantro, the scallions, pretty much everything we need, and we're gonna toss it with a little bit of with a little bit of vinaigrette here. But you can see it's kind of like a, a nice chunky salsa. You know, you're not looking for anything too fine. So I'm going to whisk this up a little bit. So this is our broken vinaigrette uh, that you can find in the recipes, but we're just going to give it a 
quick little mix and the uh, biscuits should be good to come out. We're gonna put them in the oven. Check the mac and cheese as well. This is a little broken vinaigrette, so you're gonna wanna give it a nice little stir before you serve it. We'll do about a tablespoon, yeah, a tablespoon and a half. Make this nice and saucy. A lot more liquid in the bowl now. Some of the tomatoes probably starting to release some of their juices now. So it's getting nice and wet. Taste a little bit before I season here. Mmm, very bright. A little bit of salt. I'm glad I added that lime. Gives a nice pop to it. Right. Once more in the seasoning. Nice and salty. Oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. So before I plate that up and eat that with some chips, I'm going to check the mac and cheese, get the biscuits in the oven. Ooh, mac and cheese is looking good already. It's only been in there about mm, 25 minutes. Well, a little bit less than 20 minutes. But you can see some of the breadcrumbs are starting to get nice and toasted there somewhere. So it's only been in about 20 minutes, so we're going to give it a little more time. Oh, it's looking good. So mac and cheese. Another, put another 50 on it, and then that'll be the biscuit timer for the first turn. So let's get our egg wash going. Wash, it's just going to be one whole egg. It's been whisked up a little bit. And we're going to use that to coat the uh, biscuits and get a nice and uh, get a nice and golden brown on the top. All right. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. Get in the egg wash a little whisk. Hey, hey, thanks for the bits. That's the spicy meatball. All right, so got our egg wash. Just a little bit of scrambled raw egg. We got the biscuits. <laughs> nice little squares here. And we're gonna. I got chilled just a little bit, which is perfect. And we're just gonna lightly brush all sides of the biscuits. Gonna give each side a little tap. About one, uh, it's about one, one little, uh, what's it called? One little whisk full on each biscuit. I'm gonna start with the top and then work your way to the sides. The sides aren't super important, the top's kinda a little bit more important. But it's nice to get the sides down a little bit so you can get that nice crispy crispy egg wash brown all the way on all sides especially when the biscuit starts to rise it'll help kind of a uh, you know get the middles a little bit crispier all right so egg wash is done and we're going to throw this in the 375 oven with the mac and cheese about 15 minutes and after that we'll check it probably turn it for another 10 and we'll see where it is from there Switching. So the mac and cheese is still in the oven. Uh, it's got the bacon and bis bacon bacon and uh, bacon and breadcrumbs on top. I'm gonna check it another fifteen because a lot of a lot of the breadcrumbs are on top. Still aren't probably. Uh, baked off all the way so but we do have a finished dish here hey what's up to that so got a little like kind of salsa bowl here and cowboy caviar or Texas caviar depending on where you're from it's all good to go 
And like I said, you can generally see this as, you know, sometimes more of a bean salad with multiple beans. I like to eat it kind of more as a condiment. So I'm going to grab a couple tortilla chips, go to town on this. I'm going to pull up my little fryer cam so you can see this. I'm really excited about the fryer cam whenever we're frying that chicken. Here you go. Dirty fryer, but this is a really nice light here. So this is it. It's kind of like a pico de gallo with beans is probably the best way to describe it if you're just turning in. Uh, Texas caviar, cowboy caviar. It's a nice dip. Perfect for, pisc for, perfect, uh, perfect for picnics. I love to eat it with tortilla chips. I'm going to eat it with some tortilla chips right now. Lemon juice with that vinaigrette. It's probably going to be probably going to be really tasty. I did taste it before I plated it up, so. Mmm. It's good. Nice and fresh. Mmm. Love that. You can see a lot of different variations with this. You know, a lot of people will put avocado in it. Avocado is a really big thing. It makes it really popular because, you know, Looks like kind of healthy with the avocado and the beans as a dip or as a as a salad. So this is really good. These tomatoes are nice and sweet, so it's perfect. Mm. All right, happy with this. One more chip. Delicious. that bowl again so all right so now since we got a little bake time for the biscuits for the mac and cheese we're gonna do a little garnish for the deviled eggs that we'll be making later so this is a really cool technique or pretty simple as long as you have like a decently sharp knife and a little bit of a little bit of ice water but it's a cool way to get um, some texture from your scallions so I've got a little ice water here water with a little bit of ice on it one more this will kind of shock the uh, scallions a little bit the greens. Yeah, it should be good. So, my crisper kills pretty much any green or scallion, so keeping these was a little bit tough. It looks like we've got a couple to kind of show you guys. So, nice. Yeah. They've been dying in my fridge for a little bit, so kind of unfortunate, but we're just going to kind of cut down them. So, just kind of like this, making a little. Uh, people have also called it, I've heard it been called elf ears. A lot of different names for it, but it's just a cool way to kind of crisp up those scallions, give like a nice garnish to whatever you're making, and it's a nice texture. You feel like onions, raw onions. I'm a huge raw onion fan, so I'm just going to make a couple of these. Just for a little garnish for those deviled eggs. As you can see, it's already starting kind of a, it's already starting to kind of make a little elfier like this. So just kind of slowly, not slowly, just thinly slicing on a, on a kind of long bias here. Get these scallions kind of almost shredded. It's going to look really nice on the deviled egg when we make it later. But we're going to let them kind of just chill in the ice. The ice will crisp it up, refresh it a little bit, and then they'll be a nice texture. And they look cool too. Alright, so that's enough. For a little garnish. We're gonna keep it in the ice water and then they'll kind of refresh and I'll take them out. 
probably once we check the biscuits. But they're just chilling here in the ice water. Take one of these ice cubes up. Alright, there we go, cool. We're gonna let those chill. Do one more in case I feel like making a lot of double eggs. Alright, there we go. Blah, blah, blah. these for later. We're just going to throw these scallion ends in the refrigerator for a little bit. All right. Whew. Let's see what's next on our list here. Yeah, biscuit should be coming out or should be able to check Stay them back hydrated. in Stay hydrated. This is a threat. Hey, okay. you have hydration. <sighs> Delicious. Sweet. So, cowboy caviar is done. Made. Delicious. Um, we got some deviled eggs to make. The biscuits that are in the oven. Mac and cheese is in the oven. I'm going to check the mac and cheese just because it'll be done first, probably. will be done just in about seven minutes so that's perfect we'll turn the biscuits and then press onward oh. how are we looking on time what time is it eight o'clock cool beans this is some uh new stuff from bls well not really new it's been in the shop for a while but i uh i finally picked one up a really nice cap i got flour on it today though oh well caps are made to get dirty oh well but I love it. I think Cronus is the other person that has this uh, hat, so it's it's swag. It's pretty comfortable. You know, just gotta break it in. He also got, uh, this came in surprisingly quick. Like I said, that's one thing about like Streamlabs OBS is, uh, this is my new logo. Uh, it takes, it only takes like four or five days to come in, which is weird. It says like, you know, oh, it'll be ready in like 15 to 30 days. And then like four days later is at my apartment just ready. So it's kind of wild how fast those come out. But like, I could tell that it was kind of like, may have just been made because just like the smell of paint coming off it was like, oh my God, they like, just made this thing. I opened it up and it was like the paint like fume so I've just been kind of letting it air out before I wash it because I don't know, don't know what to do about a shirt like that <laughs> just weird yeah weird paint fume smell all right so we're gonna start talking fried chicken a little bit just kind of in the meantime so the way I am um, doing the fried chicken today is I marinated it for, it was, it was overnight, but at least 12 hours, uh, like it says in the recipe. But roasted garlic, uh, cloves, because they use a roasted garlic oil, so why not have it? But we have a fried chicken just kind of sitting in this buttermilk. It's been marinating, you can see the fried garlic, I mean the roasted garlic cloves in there, but paprika, a little bit of pickle juice, salt, pepper, you know, all the good things, none of the bad. And we're gonna fry that, fry those off, probably towards the end of the stream, because we got some more stuff. Also made some chili. <laughs> all this, you know, I have all this random mise en place for my stream and uh, made some banging chili. Like, oof, that's really good. Alright. We got about four minutes. I'm going to check that mac and cheese because it's kind of close. I don't want anything to burn. is good now so mac and cheese is coming out we're gonna wait for it to uh you know cool before i do anything mm -hmm. hey. what's up llama 
pop this over here on the uh, on the hashtag fryer cam. You can see this mac cheese and all this glory. So as you can see, the breadcrumbs are nice and crispy on top. Some of the kind of burnt cheddar. Okay. So yeah, this is about what you want it to look like when it comes out. Breadcrumbs on cooker on top are nice and cooked. It's you know a nice crust there. That's gonna be really good with the, with the bacon and the breadcrumbs and a little bit of extra oil. It's gonna be excellent. We're gonna let it chill for a little bit more, then break into it. it. Just came out of a 375 degree oven, so it's pretty hot. But the biscuits in about three minutes, we're gonna give them a little turn, a little turn skis. Yeah, disgusting fryer. I know. I try to clean it. I love you. Even. Hey. Love you too, baby. Mwah. Llama, how's uh, how's date night? <laughs> that mac looks so good. Yeah, it's gonna look it's gonna look good too when I you know, scoop it out, all the cheese and everything. Yeah, llama, we uh, we made that cowboy caviar in case you're just tuning in. But um, it's kind of what it looks like. Um, do, 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 pull this back up. It's a nice little bean salad slash dip. So we're like, hey, no problem. You didn't really miss much. I mean, I made some biscuits, but they're still in the oven. But yeah, I made this little cowboy caviar. It's, um, you know, beans. Think of, like a pico de gallo with beans, kind of. It's nice and fresh. I was eating with some tortilla chips earlier, but I can't eat too much because I need to eat this fried chicken. So, <laughs> yeah, and then the mac and cheese went in. We made a little caramelized onion bechamel. Or, uh, yeah, made it earlier, but I assembled it and it should be about ready to go. Biscuits are in the oven. So we're about to get ready on that. So, deviled eggs would be next. So, I'm gonna start pulling out all my deviled egg mise en place. Hey, banger style, what up, dude? Who touched my spaghetti? 17 months, bro. Let's go. How you doing, salad? There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, the salad. Hey, look at that. Chim's toasty. Delicious. Banger one. Yeah, so as you can see in the recipe, these are pretty much all my ingredients for the double egg. Uh, but I have the cooked egg yolks right here. It's about a cup, a little bit under, but I don't need to make a lot. So, got the cooked nice and yellow there. La la! <laughs> Bang our llama in the chat, let's go. But black pepper, you know, there's nothing like crazy about this double deck recipe. It's very simple. It's just a lot of stuff that people, you know, that stay just have hydrated. Right now this is a threat. It's just good, it's just better. So, we got mustard, black pepper, a little bit of chili garlic sauce, uh, kosher dill sandwich uh, pickle juice, which I also use to marinate some of the chicken in. I think pickle juice is very important in southern cuisine. Um, Duke's mayonnaise, of course. I uh, I didn't think much of mayonnaise until I, until I had Duke's. So now I'm a mayonnaise lover. Uh, Duke's sponsor me, sponsor the stream maybe. I'll uh, I'll use it in every cooking stream. Let me know. Uh, hashtag Duke's. Hashtag um, Duke partner. Doughboy. Right. Hopefully they see that. Somebody send that out to their corporate if you wouldn't mind. Thank you for the hydration. Oh my god, Dukes. Dukes, get on it. <laughs> you, want, you want this man to represent your ground. Alright. Clip that. Let's see it. Do hey, Kate, what's up? How we doing? How we doing? Alright, so we're just getting the double day mix going. But our biscuits are about, well, probably about halfway done. So I'm going to give them a little turn. Oh yeah, our biscuits are going pretty well. You can see they're nice and uh, golden brown. But we're going to need them to cook just a little bit longer. But they did puff up nicely. You can already see the kind of layers forming, which is nice. I'll have my people contact their people. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so those biscuits, ovens, usually the oven is like 20 degrees below, but today it's actually like working. So I was expecting it to take a little bit longer, 
but we got another probably four or five minutes on that. I'm gonna get him nice and golden brown. He knows the people. Of course. He's banger, so he, know, he knows the people. But while we do that, we're going to start doing our doubled egg mix. So, gotta get my little sieve out here. here it is. So an easy way to you know, kind of break up the uh, egg yolks you cook is either you know, throw it in a food processor. Ba -na -na, na -na -na. <laughs> Love it. Either throw it in a blender. That's usually how you see deviled egg mix make at restaurants, but I'm making a very small batch. Did the Mac come out already? Mac, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's cooling down. I'm about to pull it out once I, uh, should be good. I'll, I'll show it once in a sec. <laughs> All right, sweet, so we got the egg yolks. I'm just gonna pass these real quick, so. Passing through like a kind of a fine sieve just to get it like nice and small, then we'll start adding the ingredients. Just kind of forcing them through your, forcing them with your hand through the sieve. I like to kind of get my knuckles in there. Damn, I went to make some pop for oh, you'll see it, you'll see it. So here you're just kind of breaking the egg yolks up. It's a good way to get them nice and small. Especially, you know, deviled eggs, always tough with, you know, uh, shell fragments around so it's nice to kind of give you know, make sure there's no shell fragments and uh, they won't be sifted through so all right so that was about a cup and then once we get it all passed through kind of zhuzh it out of your tammy a little bit there we go and nice powdered egg yolk throw this down here so yeah nice bright yellow Egg yolks, finely powdered. All right, uh, perfect timing, Mac. Uh, I'm gonna show that real quick, and then it's probably warm. It's probably cold enough to where I can actually get my get a uh, get a spoon into it. So the Mac with some nice cheese on top, cheese and the breadcrumbs with the bacon, nice and crispy. That's what it's looking like. Ooh, yeah. So we'll bring it out here. Yeah, it's pretty cool now. Dang. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's out. Should be good to go. Let's grab a little spoon. Give it a taste. Give it a go. Biscuits are about to come out. Uh, timer. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, so there's the Mac. Just another little last second view. I'm hoping to see a scoop shot later. <laughs> All right, so like, there we go. Nice and steamy, nice and cheesy. It took a little bit too big of a bite, I think. It's gonna burn, absolutely burn the shit out of my mouth. But yeah, as you can see, like I was saying, with the oil and the breadcrumbs and stuff, it really helps kind of coat the top of the, coat the top of the noodle a little bit. Man, all this light. Mmm. Nom nom. I mean, it's great. So the caramelized onion base smell that I made the mix into it with a little bit of cheese. Yeah. You bite the caramelized onion, kind of sweet. You get the bacon, very salty. You know, borderline umami. A really good. Cheesy. I mean, it's mac and cheese with bacon. And, you know, what else? You know, what else do I really need to say? So. Well. Break on church on type is on top is very nice. Coat into the noodle well. <laughs> yeah, scoop shot. Um, <laughs> Mamma mia, that's, that's a, a spicy, spicy meatball. <laughs> Staying on nicely. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. All right, well, put that off the side. My timer's about to go off, I think. But yeah, as you can see on the recipe for that, the um, the caramelized onion base smell. So dang, it looks good. Thanks. It's a little bit tough that recipe because you're using bacon fat. Uh, to make the bechamel, it's uh, split roasted garlic oil and baking fat to make the roux for the bechamel. So seasoning is tricky on that one because you don't want to add too much, especially because you're getting bacon on top. 
So like the seasoning for that, you, you can't over season pretty easily. But that's always a, uh, it's always, you know, what could happen with bacon sometimes. Just got all that salt on it. So, so you definitely kind of want to watch the seasoning, especially with all the cheese and everything. That's our biscuit timer. Let's see how they look. Mamma mia! All right, biscuits are out, and this is what they look like. Nice golden brown. I'll just let those rest there. Pull this up a little bit here. Mmm, yeah. Nice biscuits, got some nice layers going here. You can see. Yeah, not a lot. I didn't laminate it too much. Nice quick biscuit. You know, nothing fancy, just a, just a solid, solid biscuit all around. Those look legit, brother man. Thank you. I was a, I was a biscuit cook for a year and a half. I, uh, this place called Colleen's Kitchen. Uh, my, my main job at the restaurant was to make biscuits, and I did that for about a year and a half. So I've made quite a few biscuits, over thousands of biscuits in my day, which is why the channel points are biscuits, because I've made thousands of biscuits in my life. So. And this is kind of loosely based off of the recipe uh, from the kitchen that I worked at. A little bit different with my own tweaks. Looks like we got a little, some stuck biscuits gonna get my bowl scraper and just kind of, you know, I don't want to, while they're still warm, a little bit malleable. They're stuck a little bit. There we go. Put it back out. You know, let those chill for a little bit and then open one up, butter it maybe some stickage a little bit while those are chilling we're gonna start doing our double eggs we'll get all the greens together and then before we plate them up we'll crack in those biscuits cool all right so deviled egg mix we got the egg yolks as you already saw coming in here i'm gonna do approximately a quarter cup of mayo I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it because I'm doing this for a while, so. It'll be about approximately, you know, what the recipe will be. A quarter cup, that's good. And then we're gonna do about a tablespoon of mayonnaise, I mean, a tablespoon of uh, mustard. Actually, no, it, it wasn't, oh, it wasn't a tablespoon, it was two teaspoons. Again, this is all in the, uh, again, this is all in the recipes. Um, you know, I don't have them. I don't have them pulled up, so. Um, I mean, I made them yesterday, so I'm pretty much know what's in them. A little bit of pickle juice, about one and a half ounces. That's just gonna add some nice dill and florality to everything. So I don't like adding herbs to, de to uh, deviled eggs, but I like having that kind of herbaceous dill flavor. So, I love that follow alert. <laughs> oh yeah, and then we got black pepper. This will be about. Oh, hi, thanks pepper. for checking hey. in. Hey. Tsunami and little pinche. Thanks for the follow. Just making some uh, deviled eggs right now. So that's going to be about a teaspoon of coarsely cracked, coarsely cracked ground pepper. Yes. <laughs> Something about ogres having layers. <laughs> All right. So we got most of the ingredients in. We're also going to add about a teaspoon of this lovely chili paste. I like to have a little bit of a <laughs> my leg. I like to have a little bit of spice in my double egg. Um, I'll also be adding chili powder to it later, so there's also that. A little bit more. So I got the pickle juice in, mayonnaise, and you got the mustard in. You got black pepper. We're gonna add some seasonings, a little salt. I'm here because of the other side. My leg. <laughs> Your heart brought you here. This is your destiny. Well, welcome in. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the other side of Twitch, I guess you could say. But yeah, <laughs> the place I work at. So, all right, cool. Pretty much have all the seasonings. I'm just gonna add a little. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna add chili pepper for the garnish. This is just a little occasion seasoning. Then we're gonna give it a nice vigorous whisking here. This is it your delay or his love for small business deli sandwiches? <laughs> your heart right here. <laughs> All right, 
So, we got everything mixed together. Now we're just gonna kind of vigorously whisk the egg yolks into the mayonnaise and everything. It's gonna get kind of pasty like this. It'll eventually kind of thicken up like it is now. It's getting nice and yellow. We're gonna taste it for some salt, but this is just the uh, egg yolk filling for the double eggs. Again, you can see all these recipes in uh, exclamation point recipes. If you want to know what all I'm cooking, exclamation point cooking. If you want to give me a kiss, exclamation point chef kiss. That's all, that's all there is to it today, tonight. Also got some really fun themed alert boxes. <laughs> all right, so my guess is I'm going to need a little salt on that, but I'll taste it beforehand. Never want to assume when it comes to salt. Mmm. Actually, salt's, salt's pretty good. That's good. I like that. You get the dill, black pepper, mustard, mayo. Touch of that heat from the Cajun seasoning. I think everything's coming through. I like it. Happy with it. Now, now that they have that made, we're gonna eventually, you know, pipe it on and everything. But we're gonna check out those biscuits. Those biscuits. Those biscuits. There we go. Wow. All right, so. These are yeah warm enough to handle. So we got some nice layers there. A little pull apart here. Actually, let's move this up a little bit. I like the lighting you get on these biscuits. This is nice. Have a good stream. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. Nice crispy layers. That's why it's always important to get the egg yolk, the egg, the egg wash all the way around, so you get like nice crispy layers right there. But yeah. Nice fluffy biscuit. Tasty. You can see the, the layers from the folding right there kind of worked into the dough. That's kind of why I was folding it, and that's why it's important to have the uh, small, small little pieces of butter in there. But really good. Nice and fluffy, very moist. I mean, they just came out of the oven, so they're never going to be better, but very good. Happy with the way it came out. Mm. Yeah. Salt biscuits, very happy with it. That's a nice little cross cut there. Do not burn the root. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that day, that was funny. <laughs> that was one of the first people to try one of my recipes from the, uh, from my little recipe Discord there that I had for a minute. Trust me on that. Mmm. <laughs> that was good. Black pepper was in there. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meat board. That's the spicy meat board. Still have one, 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 still have one. Let's do all the thing. That's fine. All right. Well, I'm gonna stop eating biscuits and plate up this. Oh, I didn't know. Do that. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Alright. Alright. Hey, no worries. I don't mind the height. Ah, don't worry about it, man. <laughs> We're all chilling. All right, deviled eggs coming out. So I've got all season, like you saw me do before. I'm gonna turn my oven off before I forget because, you know, it's just heating up the apartment at this point. Oh, All right, so got a little piping bag here. I'm just gonna kind of funnel it in. these doubled eggs up. And 
And then after that, it's fried chicken time. I'll do, I'll do declare. Which reminds me, I need to turn my fryer on. All right, so. There's my bowl scraper. Somebody touch my spaghetti! Blue boy, thank you for the gifted subs! for later. Who touched my spaghetti? You can call me Chad. <laughs> A big Pluto little Chad. Somebody touch my spaghetti! <laughs> Chad Gigadon. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Alright, now. Before, we got our deviled egg mix and a nice small little piping bag here. We're gonna plate them up. Absolute poggers. All right, so this is a little uh, little oak board my dad made, um, and my uh, the pop up series that I've been doing. I haven't done it in a while though. Whenever I do my bed, I find I usually serve on trimets on these, but it was from an uh, an elk tree, an elk tree, an elm tree. Sorry, it's from an elm tree in our front yard that we cut down, and uh, yeah, they make really great plates. So I love them. Use them all the time. We've got our egg whites over here, hollowed out just like any deviled egg you'd see. Cooked and hollowed out, nothing crazy there. We've got our seasoning, and we're gonna pull out those scallion ends that we were uh, chilling. Chilling in a little bit of water, as you can tell they're, uh, they've definitely taken on a more gnarly dimension, you know. They were started off straight and now they're, you know, nice and curly and stuff. And it just adds a nice little texture. It makes a lovely garnish. Adds a little bit of texture. So we're going to add those right there. And we're also going to garnish a little bit of chili powder. My wife is asking how long you cook the eggs. So for these eggs, um, they were about 12 minutes. Um, and they came out kind of perfect. Um, but I also, I do something pretty untraditional when it comes to cooking eggs. Uh, this is something I learned at my last job at the, uh, the hotel is uh, it, like instead of like waiting like cooling them and then peeling them is you peel them under running under running cold water and it works really well especially with brown eggs um, because the egg is still hot, it's still hot so the shell is still expanding and everything so you can get the shell off very easily when it's warm because it's like it's cooked but it's you know it's still expanding so there's a lot of air pockets you can like you can you know work your way into and get like you know the you, know, you can peel them a lot easier than you would if they were cold because they're still malleable and they're warm so that's kind of that's something i learned big brain big brain egg peeling yeah i mean that restaurant i had to do that i had to do like three i had to do like 90 eggs every like three days so you know we had to find a way to do it where it was consistent so i should do that at home i think i got there in a more silly way <laughs> yeah yeah it works super well anyways um just a little like you know kind of free advice because it does work very well but you know Always wear gloves because the eggs can be really hot, so, yeah. All right, we're gonna cut the tip on this pastry bag. Yoink. A little bit more. And then we're gonna kinda, I'm gonna, I guess I'll put three on the plate here. One over here, one over here, one over here. And then we're gonna fill up the insides of the eggs. And kind of a cool way to get a nice, you know, especially when you have a piping bag, if you just kinda go in and out real quick and get some nice height to it like that so personally I don't like I don't like deviled eggs that are stacked too high I like you know 
because the, then when they're stacked too high, they get really soupy. So I like, you know, I don't like too much, but I do, you know, like a nice mound, but just found a cleaner. Yeah, definitely. It works so much easier. Yeah. So you get nice little tips there. Put this back in the little egg thing. And now with our lovely scallion garnishes we have. Yeah, it's going to do about one or two. Actually, before I do that, so it looks nice and clean. And I have chili powder here. I'm going to do it over the sink here because I don't want to get on my cutting board. So just a little dusting. I like to do quite a bit. There you go. And then get the scallion greens on there. There you go. Same watching this physically hurts. <laughs> that reminds me, I'm gonna do a little uh, do a little Instagram post real quick. I have homework to do, but I'm too busy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh god. Okay. Cool. Cool. Can I share that Instagram real quick? Let's go! Nice. Alright. Tight. So, I'll just move these over here. Okay. That's a nice little, nice little beginnings of a picnic right there. We got some deviled eggs, we got some biscuits. Take one of these and I'll eat them. Yoink. Mm. That's generally what I don't like to do. A lot of egg yolk mix because when you take the first bite into it, sometimes it'll be like really sloppy, but the right amount of mayo, you know, it's not too sloppy. But you definitely want to have enough yolk mixture on there, but having too much sometimes I feel it'll be like slipping out of the egg. Because eating an egg at one bite is tough. No one should do that, or at least a half an egg. Like you should always take a <laughs> double egg in two bites. Mmm. Scallion with a nice texture, good seasoning. The salt deviled egg. Will you two bite those? I've always just mouthed the whole thing. Well, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, for me, every time that I've ate, I've eaten like a like a half a whole egg, like I mean, maybe because I've asked the reflex, it just never sat well. So I like to take a little two, a little, little bite at a time. That's good. Hmm. All right. That was good. It's almost fried chicken. It's almost fried chicken time, everybody. My fryer is on. Lovely. I'm gonna eat this half biscuit. Put it over. How's everybody's night going? Happy Sunday. Hope y'all are all having a good one. 
This is definitely the highlight of my su Sunday night. Got some BLS tomorrow. Hey, there's the recipes. Well done. Boggers. Hmm. I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. I want that bisque recipe. There it is, yeah. It's all on there. Worked all day, but it was worth it. All right, I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick, then I'll think of that pole. I don't want you, I don't want you to have to waste your biscuits, so. I'm gonna think of it, and I'll put it up, I'll take it back. The beer bee! Be right back, everybody. Do the sound alerts go through on his screen? Yeah. They indeed do. On this scene? They indeed do not. Oh, on the scene, I see. All right. Make that two trues, one line pull. Well, uh, well uh, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't uh, uh, How do you do this? Or this! Or this! Good song to put and on while I do this. Watch this, Mr. Krabs! Walking tight beat. Alright, I'm starting this pole. Solar on the beat. New pole. There's the poll. To choose one lie, guess the lie. Manage poll. Let me view the results. Already there. All right. We got about 20 minutes on the clock. Guess the lie. To choose one lie. I was in church choir. I was in 4 H in high school. I was in the Boy Scouts. To choose one lie, guess the lie. If you do guess the lie, you win the satisfaction of knowing that you know something about Doughboy. All right, but nonetheless, it's fried chicken time, guys. So uh, let's fucking get it. Where's the bowl? There it is. Yark, yark, yark. We got one bowl. Two truths, one lie. All right, guessing the lie. We have two two people says that I weren't in church choir. Interesting. One person thinks I wasn't in high school. One person thinks I wasn't in the Boy Scouts. Flowers ready for this fried chicken business. Get a little buttermilk out for the shag. Probably should be good, nothing more than that. Here. 
Just about one minute left, it looks like. Get your votes in. Two truths, one light bulb. Learn something about the old deal boy. Cool, cool, cool. One flower, two flower. Hog champ. So right now I'm just getting my uh, original, my, uh, my, I don't know, just flower dredge, and then we're gonna have a little shag dredge in here. Kind of talk through that a little bit in case you guys don't know what that means. Buttermilk for the shag. I'm gonna see you in my uh, shag flower cookie trees are the best. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We're just about to get into the fried chicken. So, it's gonna be exciting. Seasoning my uh, dredge a little bit. About a tablespoon ish of salt. About two teaspoons of black pepper. Uh, maybe actually more like one teaspoon, teaspoon and a half, maybe. It's pretty coarse. Just give them a little mix from the seasonings. All right, so two truths, one lie. Two people think that I was in the church choir. Well, the lie was I was not in 4-H in high school. I was in church choir, and I was in Boy Scouts. And I, yeah, so if you guessed uh, the middle one, if you guessed 4-H, I was not in 4-H in high school. So. Now you know a little something extra about the Doughboy. Thanks for redeeming that, uh, Stone Cold Cream Austin. So to kind of shag you see in air quotations the dredge that i have here i'm just kind of slowly incorporating a little bit of buttermilk into and it will kind of clump up the flour so i'm gonna just do a little bit on the outside here and kind of start working it in and you pretty much just want it to clump up the flour in a in a kind of appealing way because that will get really nice and crispy when it fries so you don't want to you know make a dough or anything but you want it Dang, 4-H was my last guess. <laughs> we do want to have quite a few clumps in here because the, those little clumps of oh, buttermilk thanks flour for checking will make in. a very I'm still good, a piece of garbage. Uh, fried chicken uh, dredge. Hey, Gino, Gino the V, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Uh, we're winding down the end of my cooking stream. I am currently uh, frying some chicken. so Kind of the piece de resistance of the fried chicken picnic. But yeah, um... I'm gonna say the shag is almost there. I want a little bit more clumps, but you you know, you want it to, whenever you press it together, you want it to hold a little bit of texture, but you also want it to break down. So I think this is gonna be good. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more buttermilk, for being honest, but I think, you know, small amount of flour that I have, it'll be fine because we'll get a little bit more buttermilk into it, you know, with the, let me add the chick, so. Dryer open. Drop those right in. All right. So the buttermilk that we've had, um, I mean the uh, chicken that we've been uh, marinating buttermilk. It's got some roasted garlic, uh, chili powder, a little bit of Italian seasoning, uh, pickle juice, salt, pepper. You know, all of you can find on the uh, on the recipes. So right now I'm gonna do. Uh, so I'll start with the thighs, I guess. We'll do one thigh. Yeah, I'll do one thigh, one leg. All right, so right out of the chicken here, we still have flowers that are nice and, you know, you wanna have like one wet hand, one dry hand. So you're not mixing a lot of things and getting, even though in this process, it kind of would be almost help you because, you know, the more shag, the better kind of. So no shag in here, uh, just regular flour. We're gonna coat once. Light coating and I'm just gonna dip back in real quick to the marinade. And then we're gonna go right to the shag there and that'll get a nice, there we go. And we'll get a nice covering and coating, nice and tight. Get all of the crevices, pack it in, press it down, ship it out, throw it in the deep fryer. There we go, and this is a uh, bone-in chicken thigh, so this is gonna take about 10 minutes at 350. So really just kind of getting all of the crevices filled. Don't wanna break that crust too early. You can kind of see, um, well, you'll see in a minute, but very, it's very kind of well-coated here. 
Let's see here. Boop, there we go. Let's see, I see the, the kind of shaggy bits are around. Nice and flowered surface, and we're gonna toss it right in. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the leg. First in the regular flour. And we have the fryer at about three, 360, a little bit over 350. Just so, because I'm gonna add two things. It's a pretty small fryer. So whenever you're, you know, a lot of displacement and oil, the temperature will go down a lot. So you wanna kinda of like have the temperature a little bit higher. So it'll eventually drop because you know you're cooking cold meat. So the temperature of the fryer will go down. So that's why you know I want to fry it at 350, but I'm having it a little bit higher. Then we'll drop it down just because you know it helps for that kind of temperature correction, so to speak. Again, we got a nice shag to get in there. Those are underway, and uh, here we've been frying for a little bit. I'm gonna get my timer out. It should take about 10 minutes. All right, cool. And then while those are frying, make sure they're not sticking. The fryer basket that would be bad. That's doing that. I'm just gonna kind of batter these two, and then we'll stick them in some flour. I might fry them off tomorrow morning or something. I might fry them off tonight. Yeah, a little late snack. Yeah, I got. Uh, I didn't know. I probably won't be super hungry uh, after these first two, but. Okay. Actually, you know, I'll just leave these in the leave these in the in the brine. Hmm. Or I could just do it and then cover it, but I'm just going to leave it in the brine. Cook that chicken meat. Or depending on, I mean, this is going to take about 10 minutes, so I could just do a second round, but... Yeah, I think I'll just do a second round, actually. Now that I'm talking about it, we're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of dead time with this 10 minutes cook time, so... Put a little flour down on my uh, tray here. Then I'm just gonna put it in the uh, put it in the in the fridge while we wait for it. But I'll just kind of talk through the little coating process again. You want you know one dry hand, one wet hand. Get the flour. One quick covering. And these are uh, bone-in.
That looks good. The dredge is seasoned, so I'm just going to kind of rest it for a little bit. Crispy that. Looking good. Very crispy, very crispy. Let this chill. And I guess since we're here, I'm just gonna throw those two uh throw those next two in. Why not? You know? Pry them off. Eat them tomorrow. One of my favorite things about the cooking streams is uh, leftovers for days, so. <laughs> Just getting these next two in. Things probably will have to fry for a little bit, oh god. Things probably will have to fry for a little bit longer since uh, Since the temperature of the uh, oil has has chilled a little bit, Let's fry it forever. fix that. So, fried chicken's looking good. <laughs> nice looking chicken. On that, lovely. Hey, thanks for the chef's kiss. Yeah, fried chicken looking fucking solid. Came out really well. Nice and crispy. Nice and nice and well covered there. So those took about 10 minutes-ish. Hope you're having a great night. Hey, yeah, having a great night. Frying some chicken. Hanging out with the boys. Love to see it. So this chicken, we've got another, got some more time in it. Like I said, probably a little bit more than usual because the temperature of the fryers drop a little bit. So still frying, but we do have some fried chicken that is probably cool. It's just enough to eat. Look at that. Nice crust there. It's actually still pretty warm, but really happy with the way it came out. Good coverage. And that's what all those little kind of buttermilk shag pieces do. They get really nice crispy on the outside. I'm actually going to let that chill for like a little bit longer. It was a very warm, warm fried chicken. It's a bone in thigh, bone in leg. So yeah, all the biscuits are done. The um, mac and cheese came out looking solid. This is the last thing we're doing here tonight. Grab some water. Turn my AC up a little bit. It's getting warm over here at this fryer. I'm glad I turned the oven off, but. Oh, that's good.
A plate with everything on it? Yeah, that sounds good. Since it's a, since it's a picnic, I'm gonna go on a paper plate, just cause. Ooh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, this chicken suck on one more time. more time and then we're gonna crack into this fried chicken here. Cool. Yeah, we're getting close on that. And there we have a little plate with everything on it. <laughs> here we go. Nice picnic style plate. Everything. We got the mac and cheese, the deviled egg, cowboy caviar, the nice fried chicken, lovely biscuit. All right, now it's time to eat this fried chicken. It's finally cooled down. All right, got the thigh first here. Mm. Nice and crispy. adding the, the roasted garlic cloves. As you really taste it, it's kind of crazy. Christian food maker? What's your favorite piece of fried chicken? Was that the thigh? Yeah, yeah. At the thigh, and then we got the wing here. Virtual eating thing, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I like the thighs personally, it's my favorite. Woo! Oh, jeez. Yeah. Still very warm. I agree with that. Thighs for show, for show. Fire pop. Pretty close. The fried chicken was. Hmm, just good. These guys are basically done. And we're on the timer here. Yeah. Hmm. 
Mr. Gullet Fried Chicken is pog. Good fried chicken. What's that? More fried chicken. Oh my god! Oh my god, somebody stop him! Fresh fried chicken out the fryer. Nice golden brown and crispy. Wah! Wah! Looking nice. All right, well, there we have it. Delicious crispy fried chicken. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. All the new people, all the new follows. Do you know the evil Stone Cold Steam Cream Austin? Thank you for all those biddies. A little pinche Tunavi. Banger, thank you for the sub once again. All the new peeps, thanks for hanging around. I got a lot of fried chicken. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah, this is the, uh, the way the last Mama one Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. That's a spicy meatball. Beautifully, beautifully crispy chicken there. Nice chicken life. All right, well, we're gonna find somebody to raid, and then I'm gonna clean up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna. Mamma mia, that's a spicy that's meatball. That's a spicy meatball. Thank you for all the bits, guys. Appreciate you guys, of course. I'll post these recipes in my uh, in my Discord so you guys can have them. But one last time, there it is. Yeah, I'll definitely, uh, you know, once I do the a little video for this, I'll upload the recipes to the Discord. If you guys want to join the Discord, uh, scroll down below to the panels, and you guys can get a little link into the, the domain, as we like to say, in the Doughboy Discord. Free recipes is always available in there. Also, you know, get to know when I'm going live and all that stuff, so. Shall we switch? Shall we search the Twitch, the Twitch first, and figure out who we shall raid? Hi, hey, SBK, Game23 Vera, what up? We just got done with our cooking stream here. We made a lot of fried chicken <laughs> and other picnic favorites, but we're about to uh, raid somebody else. So, you can always go back and watch the VOD if you want, but we just had some great time cooking some food. It's been a blast. I'll kind of show you this uh, fried chicken that I made. Pretty happy with it. Whoop. Very nice and crispy. Mm, very nice and crispy indeed. All right, well, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by for the picnic. Hope you guys had as much fun as I did. I always have a blast, you know. Love streaming, love cooking. Love doing them both at once. Kind of a no-brainer, if we're being honest. And it's perfect for follow goals to me, for me. Because, you know, the more people, it was Liddy, eh. Appreciate you. We've got about, ooh, it looks like we've got about nine folks here. Nine folks in the chat. Oh, nine folks in the chat, dear. Oh, my. Um, if you're still watching, I hope you had a lovely time with Kate. Kate, if you're still watching, thanks for stopping by. Um, we can raid uh, the new Chi or J Spicy. Let's do J Spicy. The new Thanks for the food porn. Hey, you know, anytime. Gotta get this raid sure going here. Low. Let's. Oh. Okay, oh, yeah, the person I was gonna raid, I think, is, got, is, is leaving. So. Oops. Let's raid Mr. Bayoki. He raided me, so I shall return the favor. He's playing some 76 right now. He's one of the one of the people that uh, gave me a huge raid when I first started streaming 76 again. So. I'm gonna return the favor, you know. Return the favor of the boys. Yeah, do it. Teabag me. Teabag. Copy paste his name over here. We'll get teabag. And we'll get good to go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, gaming dude. What's up, man? 
<laughs> He's got some funny stuff happening Morgan. on the stream right now. Uh, this will be interesting. <laughs> I haven't seen these little things he's posting. I don't know. My German is, is scheisse. Hop on the raid if you guys want. The only thing I know how to say in German is scheisse. I don't like how it... Nine. Oh. You have to, like, it only takes, like, five seconds now for, like, interaction. It's like, you have to be really quick on the raids. It used to give, like, people more time to join, but now it's only like I'm doing seconds. all right. It's just yeah. weird. Uh, you know, I don't know why. Maybe German it's just because, you know, just, like... Prevent the people that have been lurking. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And Either way, run this last uh, go show Blue Yankee some love. Really cool dinner. dude. Um, he's playing uh, some 76 right now. So. Enjoy. Bye. Rick Thanks. Tick. Mwah.